Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode 24 of Be With Me. I'm going to title today, Coming to Godly Grief, but there's a bunch of great stuff uh, before that. Paul is in 2 Corinthians, finishing chapter 6, and he has this parade of promises all about him and God. God dwells among us. He walks with us. Uh, I will be your God, and they shall be my people. God says, I will welcome you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be sons and daughters to me. So this incredible intimacy with the Lord God Almighty. And then he starts in verse 7, or chapter 7, verse 1. Since we have these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit, bringing holiness to completion in fear of God. So this bookend here in chapter 7, verse 1, and we're going to finish today uh, with verse 9, talk about coming to godly grief. Let us cleanse ourselves. Let us be Let's have the courage of reality that sometimes you're not okay. I mean, even from the start, we need a Savior. And then after we need a Savior, we need sanctification. So if you go to a church without repentance, that's at least a part of it, you're not going to a church at all. And if you don't arrive at repentance and godly grief occasionally from from your association with other people and with a, a body of Christ, then, then run from that church and go to one where at least that's part of the vocabulary. Verse 2, make and, and 3, make room in your hearts for us. We've wronged no one. We've corrupted no one. We've taken advantage of no one. I do not say this to condemn you, for I said before that you are in our hearts to die together and to live together. Curiously, he says, make room in your hearts for us. Uh, for you we are in our hearts. This is a theme that he uh, carried on from chapter six. This is a recurring theme of his about making room in your hearts, making space. It's a call to widen our hearts. That's how he said it in chapter uh in chapter six, he said, our hearts are wide open to you. And he wants them to widen their hearts as well. Again, from chapter six, his motivation is pure versus he's comparing himself a little bit with the spiritual imposters, the uh, super apostles that he's kind of competing with, quote unquote. And this, I thought, was the most curious thing today is Paul says, uh, you are in our hearts to die together and live together. So lots of what Paul says is about living together, you know, being a better person, repenting, coming to godly grief here, we'll talk about in a second. But this is a little bit unique. That is, he says, to die together, that we are in this together until the end. Here's the thought today. What church do you want then to wheel your, you know, dead body in a casket up the middle aisle? And Paul is saying, you guys are my people till when? Till death. So I'm committing to you until death. It's sort of like a marriage uh, a marriage commitment, a marriage relationship. In the meantime, then he says there's all kinds of things we need to do during our lives, and one of them has come to godly grief. But I just thought this was curious. What group of people are you willing to, to commit to towards death, because Paul is giving us a good example of that. So then in the meantime, verse 4, I am acting with great boldness towards you. I have great pride in you. I'm filled with comfort in all our affliction. I am overflowing with joy. For even when we came to Macedonia, our bodies had no rest, but we were afflicted at every turn, fighting without in fear within. I will fight for, he says in these verses. I will bear the afflictions. I will say the hard things. He, he says, I have pride with you, Corinthians. And if you kind of detail it out, you know, here's the summary about Corinthians. Is there a bunch of knuckleheads? I guess, and so are we. And he, Paul describes specifically, and yet you are my joy. So he has this commitment until death, as we talked about. But he has this commitment to a bristly, porcupiney people, both inside and outside. So the commitment is not to a perfect group of people, you know, prepare to be disappointed. But then also prepare to be comforted. Listen in verse 6 and 7. 
but God who comforts the downcast, comforted us by the coming of Titus, and not only by his coming, but also by the comfort with which he was comforted by you. As he told us of your longing, your mourning, your zeal for me, so that I rejoiced still more. And I'm calling these two verses the circle of comfort. So he's given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is be reconciled to, to God. But then after you're done being reconciled to God, get with a group of people that does, that shows this, this comfort circle. Care, comforting each other, the visit of Titus. So the Corinthians comforted Titus. And Titus now comes and reports the longing that the Corinthians had for Paul, the mourning that they had, either maybe at Paul's suffering or perhaps mourning for the, for their sin and, and the godly grief that he's going to talk about in the next little section, and this zeal that they had. So there's this circle of comfort, which I think is great. And finally here, he's introducing this concept about godly grief. Grief from the middle letter. So verses 8 and 9. For even if I made you grieve with my letter, that is the middle letter, the one between 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians, the one we don't have, for even if I made you grieve with my letter, I do not regret it, though I did regret it, for I see that that letter grieved you, though only for a while. As it is, I rejoice, not because you were grieved, but because you were grieved into repenting, for you felt a godly grief, so that you suffered no loss through us. So he's going to talk about here a godly grief, which is more than just I feel bad, which is what grief is. Godly grief is a step two, which I'm sorry, I take ownership for this, I caused it. And then step, step three is I'm going to change. We'll talk about that more t- tomorrow. But the, I think the charge today is be in community where real stuff happens. He mentions joy here. He rem- remember, He mentions repentance here. And he re- mentions uh sticking with each other until death. It's a call to grief. It's a call to godly grief. It's a call to make your hearts wider. It's a call to comfort, all emphasizing there's no such thing as the virtual church. Make room in your hearts for us, for God, and then the people of God. When? Till death, all the way to death. What group of people do you want to die with? So because of these promises of God, live life, be grieving, be convicted, grow and grow, go with the people of God all the way to the end to die together. Thanks for listening. Hope you find that group of people today.